today we're back on the Hemi. Today we put, these are the heads that I'm going to be running on this engine. And I've already, you don't need to see it, but I've already zeroed it out to this here, to, to the wheels. So that way we know exactly where TDC is at. And then I got the rocker arms on, set up springs. And I'm going to show you how to check the real and correct way for piston and valve clearance. And then this way we're going to do a map of it. So we're actually going to push down on this so that way we know exactly where it's at and how far it is. Uh, you can use the clay method. The clay method is kind of like a set of calipers. It's a quick check because wherever you cut it, that's where you're going to find out. But this one will actually tell you the whole diameter of the valve uh, in relationship to the piston is exactly where it's at in each one. Also, too, check these guys out. Man, this is an awesome tool right here. MS um, Racing Components. Sorry, I had to look through my VV unlocker and easy checker now what's cool about this is that i'm running these um short travel lifters so the easy way to do it is that this thing here's got is spring loaded so you just pop it in there then you got a little set screw here and then you can set that up and then you can when you measure the push rod you can add your twenty thousands for how much preload you're going to put into it so really bitching way to do it so and then also too it it doubles as a little push rod so you can do, check this out so here's what those push rods um, look like from this company here. Oop, upside down. These guys right here. Uh, MS Racing Components, man. These things are badass. You put them in there and you just set them and that's that. So, yeah, it's really bitching. And uh, I just I just set up this one. I'm going to do this one here. And then we're going to get we're get set up here. And then I'll show you exactly how to check this down. Oh, I made a little... To basically just get a piece of steel, drilled one hole on it so that way you can go this way or that way. So I can put my, you know, my magnetic base on there. And so I can check the at the retainer and what we're getting. So, alrighty, moving on. So then what I do is I take my finger and I put it on the on the rocker arm. And then instead of, don't, so that way you don't touch the actual retainer. And then you just push down on it. So there's one. It's 200. So I have at 10 degrees, I have 200 thousandths before piston to valve clearance has any problems. And then what I'll do is I'll just go that I'll, I'm going to back back up and I'm going to do it at 15. I'll, I'll do it at every every degree. And then that way I can see it get closer and then fall away. And then I'll do the same thing on the intake. And that way I can build the map. And uh, that way I, I know if I want to advance the cam, retard the cam. I want to go with a faster off the seat because it doesn't matter about max lift. This is all off the seat timing because if you want to look, the valve is right there because basically the piston will chase the exhaust valve closed and then the intake valve chases the piston down. But remember, you're going to have about 20 degrees maybe 22 degrees depending on your rod to stroke ratio but let's just call it 20 degrees you're going to have 20 degrees where the crank's going to be rotating but no piston movement because the, the rod's got to go from one side to the other but that's 20 degrees of of cam movement and you know with the uh, cams being as fast as they are nowadays especially when you're running like say a 165 rock arm ratio okay so now i've i've done the exhaust it was a little harder to show so i'll show you this one here on this side so obviously we already got TDC, so we marked it on the wheel before we put the head on. And now, remember, there's no head gasket on here. Um, all I did is I just put a piece of paper towel just to kind of hold it off so that way it didn't scratch the deck. So this would be the worst case scenario. So anyways, here's what I did. Is that it's got a hydraulic lifter in it, so when you press down on this, you're going to take up that slack. So you got to let it come up a little bit and there it is right there so that's that's the actual taking up the slack so i can feel it just wanting to stop right there so then what i do is i just once it stops right where's it at right right i can feel it right right there so then i just take it and i push it down so there's one oh didn't even get one so that's right at 93 95 thousandths right there so that's exactly what I got is uh, 93 to 95 thousandths. So here's, here's my, my map. 
Here's the camshaft I'm running. It is a Windsor, or what everyone calls an LS firing order, uh, 229-235 on a 110 LSA. I installed this on a 108 ICL on intake center line. And as far as the exhaust, I have plenty of room there, so I can retard away on this camshaft. Um, and I can't really advance it much. I mean, obviously, I'll, I'm going to get more clearance here, so there's plenty of room there. But... Um, I did a lot on this one. I went from two degrees before I went to zero and then I just basically went right on through. So this way it gives you an actual map. So you know that if you decide one day, oh, I want to advance the cam or retard the cam or so on and so forth. If I advance it, I might have run into a little bit of issues here. But if I, if I retard the cam and go say a 110 ICL, I have plenty of room on this. So yeah, the the Hemi's are, always get close on the, on the intake. That's the reason why I map so many of them, uh, especially when you start making the intake open so much sooner.